Uldah, the Jewel of Thanalan, home of gladiators and goldsmiths, but is known for mostly one thing, sand. It's everywhere, all around us. They even painted the walls to match the sand. This is what Uldah is known for. Also, greed and corruption, but mostly sand. Hello everyone, Cortez de Gato and the Onion Knight present to you the absolutely accurate guide to Uldah. We're going to uncover all the secrets and give you the real story behind this desert city. Remember, if we tell you something about Uldah and Square Enix tells you something else, they're wrong. Entering the city of Uldah, you first come to the Steps of Nald. But if you look around, you will not find a grand staircase, no. This is just a humble path so named because Nald like to walk here and take many steps. So we are quite literally walking in the footsteps of Nald. On our left is the Chocobo Petting Zoo. Good day, Chocobo Keep. Here you may walk right up to these normally wild creatures and feel the softness of their feathers. Who's a good Chocobo? You are. That's right. What, ride the Chocobos? That's absurd. We don't ride on birds. Riding on dogs, now that's different, but we'll get to that some other time. Occasionally, you will find signs posted around the city, and if you approach and read one, you will read nothing. It's all gibberish, because the old dons are all illiterate. They simply put up signs with random symbols to make you think they are highly cultured. Ah, the Ethernet shard. Though many enjoy walking in Nald's footsteps, sometimes a faster mode of travel is most welcome. Here is how it works. Place your hand upon the crystal and tell it where you wish to go. It will then rip out your soul, absorb your body and convert it into ether, form a new body for you at your destination, then put your soul back in. I highly suggest using one first thing in the morning. A new body means no pimples or earwax you may have acquired during the night. And if you pay a little extra, it will even do your hair for you. Are you interested in exotic shopping? Of course you are. After all, it is one of the 12 essences. Here on the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, you will find many opportunities to give your money a new home. This area used to simply be known as the shops. And to exhibit the affluence of the city, the Sultan's Sagasan Ul had sapphires embedded into the stones of the street. So when people ran out of gill, they just pried out the sapphires from the ground and exchanged those for more purchases. Hence, the new name. In addition to ripping you off, if you approach one of the merchants of the exchange, they will show off their dance moves for you. Very nice, Walter. Keep it up and you shall rival the lord of the dance himself. These young ladies do not dance when you come by, but they are cats and they do what they want. This is the Emerald Avenue, and you can probably guess why. Ah, the Platinum Mirage, and it really is. There is no building here. It's just a bunch of sand that they put a glamour on. This is the Hall of Flames, home to the best barbecue in all of Eorzea, which is why it's always crowded. They make some decent fries too, but the Gridanian potatoes are better. This is the A.O. Because I can't pronounce that. It is the training ground for the Thero Mages, where they are guided in how to Thero properly. There are many pillars here, because pillars are a very important part of the art of Thero Magi. These are the leaders of the sacred art of Thero Magi. No one knows what their original names were, because when you become one of the head Thero Mages, you take on the name of a sacred chocobo. Every guild has a receptionist with the power to welcome or deny someone to the guild. Yayake is one with such power, and she will not allow me to train here. Something about refusing to ride the sacred chocobos. But I know it is simple jealousy of my hair. Panting Brovi styling. For hair so healthy, it shines. The Quicksand, also known as the Adventurer's Guild. Though it is more of a clubhouse than an actual guild. Why? Because adventurers have no rules. For example, I can jump on this table all I wish and no one complains because we have no rules. Also, I'm a cat, so they expect it. Ah, Elviane. One of the regulars at the Quicksand who is dedicated to deciphering the Uldanian language. I've tried to tell her that it's simple gibberish, but she will not believe. The Weaver's Guild, where the blood of your pricked fingertips waters the tree of fashion. This is the Guildmaster, Rendolent Rose, and... Oh dear. It appears that he is quite angry. You see the symbol over his head? That means he is angry. And the plus sign means he is really angry. So, uh, we'll just come back another time. Here we have the Calamity Salvager and the Recompense Officer, who are the insurance agents in Uldah. If you have paid your dues and something unfortunate happens, such as being injured from a bar fight or your soul was deposited in the wrong body, simply talk to them and they will take care of you. Though, an Ethernet accident is cheaper than a Fantasia potion, so I suppose it's up to you. Lynette is the receptionist at the Miner's Guild, which means she is required to wear a pickaxe. A magical floating pickaxe. Observe that it is not even attached to her. I... I wish I had a magical floating pickaxe. Lynette, can I join this guild and get a floating pickaxe? Ah, huzzah! I now have a magical floating pickaxe, which is also a large hammer. With a claw! Ulda is quite proud of its goldsmith's guild, 
Tiny trinkets, baubles, and all manner of jewelry is crafted here, under the care of the goldsmith's tiny hammers. But my new grand hammer has given me inspiration. Hearken to me, guild members! I shall craft for you the world's largest necklace with my very large hammer! Oh. Oh dear. Perhaps this was a mistake. Yes! Behold! A necklace fit for a primal! Throw down your tiny hammers! Take up the cause of the giant jewelry! Well, perhaps the world just isn't ready for it. The Hustings Strip is where General Hustings would take insubordinate soldiers and strip them of their rank. In fact, they would be removed from service. Completely. That's why the carpet is red. Let's clean up. This is the Scholar's Walk, but there is generally no one here. Considering the Uldans are illiterate, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Since there was no other place for it, the Alchemist Guild was forced to take up residence in the boiler room. This is the main boiler for making hot water for the city, though Lord Lolorito uses up most of it for his baths. Severin, the Guildmaster, is mad. But he's always mad. It's kind of a tradition with him. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this most factual tour of Ulda. We hope to catch you next time when we tour the city of Gridania. Farewell. Pantene Pro-V, for hair so healthy, it shines. Don't go another day without it.